Hi there, and welcome to Fingerprint Cards AGM. Now shortly about what I'm going to go through with you in this, which will be also pre presented in our AGM. Now, let me first run through a few words on an introduction for us where we are as a company. Then, obviously, there is a lot of interest to understand on our short-term challenges, what happened and what have we learned. And then I will look at 2016 in perspective a bit, some of the financials, some of the, the things that happened during the year for us. There were many. And then, of course, let me end with where is this industry going, where are we going, and some of the long-term opportunities that we still have and will have as a company. Overall, when I look at the company, we are highly competitive and we fight for our market shares. Obviously, this market has changed. The OEMs have implemented dual sourcing, which fuels competition and which fuels ASP decline, average selling price decline. That's very typical in any parts of the mobile phone industry. Now, our products are competitive and so are our cost levels. It is important for us to keep driving those because obviously everybody is running hard in this industry right now. We expected and we said our market shares were in between 55 to 60 percent in 2016 and we expect them to be around 50 percent in 2017. One of the unique things we have as a company is of course our unique system knowledge. It is about understanding the overall consumer experience and the overall security of our solutions. The speed, power consumption and volume capabilities that we bring. That is an essence of what we do in our R&D. Let me get into the short-term challenges of fingerprint cards because obviously they are the reasons for our profit warnings. And, it is, and I'm going to try to explain to you what actually happened and when did we see what we saw in this. So as you can see, we have a short-term congestion in our value chain. It is a long value chain, and I will, I will try, start by explaining to you how does this chain work? How does the value chain for us work? And we are only at the start of that chain. So let's get into, the, into it, actually. Here on the left side, you can see fingerprint cards are there, where we start by selling our wafers to distributors. There are about five distributors. They have their own warehouses. And then they take forward those wafers to module houses, which are about 10 for us, over 10 today, and it is a growing. Now, then those module houses will produce modules and they will actually bring them to the OEMs, who are, of course, the ones who are making the mobile phones at the end of it. We have over 20 mo mobile phone uh, houses, so OEMs, actually. Now, they will then assemble the smartphones and send them to the distribution and retail that they have. And there are hundreds of thousands or even more than a million of retails when you look at our OEMs. More, far more than 100,000 only in China, about over 1 million retail in India. So there is a lot of retail and distribution channel that is already out there after the OEMs. And then finally, as a consumer, the person will buy in one of the retail shops, they will buy their mobile phone. This whole chain takes anything from our first distribution when it leaves our warehouses. It takes between four to six months before the consumer has the mobile phone in their hand. So we recognize sales and re or revenue recognition after we sell the wafers to the distributors. And then it continues on that chain four to six months to get to the consumer. Now earlier on, and normally in a situation, we call it the sell-in when we sell it into the distributor and it starts the process and a fairly long process of going all the way to the consumer. When it finally lands in the consumer, it is sell-through. And in a normal balance situation, the sell-in and the sell-through are the same. So you basically have a little bit of warehousing stocking on the way to be able to assemble parts, to have some capability to react to different changes in the market and the demand. But that's a normal level. Now, if you have a sell-through which is higher than the sell-in, then obviously in that situation our sales is lower, even if there is a lot, a lot of phones that are still going out. That's when everybody is selling out of warehouses. If the sell-in is higher than the sell-through, then you are basically stocking up in the chain 
and you are actually putting too much equipment into a channel without it going out into the consumer. So that's why we talk about sell in versus sell through. Now altogether when we realized from the December, we looked at and went through this chain and the first change was for us an understanding was that our sell in has been higher than the sell through. And from us all the way until the OEM, we had too much warehousing. We had too much stock. Now, what happens afterwards when we got into March was our OEMs could see that there was still good demand for the products, but they were not reaching their ambitious goals that they had prepared for. So they have taken down their view on what they actually need to deliver to the consumers in terms of sell through. And at the same time, they realize they have too much stock as well. Now, those two things together came on top of what we saw in our own value chain as well. So altogether, when you, when you put this, we have had at worst or at all the way through over 80 million units, modules and wafers in, and mobile phones in the whole channel, which has been more than was needed for the normal stock level. And that needs to destock. So basically now the sell through will be higher than sell in throughout the first half and 2017. And that means that basically our sales is far lower than what the actual sell through is on the other side. That explains all what it is. Now what can you do about it? So obviously now we have learned and we have taken some painful lessons on this one. So we are now connecting all over the channel out until the OEMs, of course, so that we understand the amount of stock at the same time as we are going through the sell-in process for us. And we, have not, we do not have the perfect visibility into the OEMs and how their business will go. That we will never have. It is far too large with retails and distributors in the amounts I talked about for us to have a full visibility in that. That is always going to be an unknown for us. And that's why we also took actually away the guidance because there are too many swingers which we will not be able to judge correctly. That is the background for what happened. We have a much better view into the whole channel. We understand what happens. Could we have done something differently? Well, actually, when somebody asks you and gives you purchase orders and asks you to s deliver a product and pays for it, it's very hard to say no because then you will for certainly lose market share in business. So to look in hindsight, that was not easy to stop when you are the first player in the chain, far, far and a long chain. Anyhow, that is a long explanation of what has happened. I hope it opened up a bit on this. The inventory levels are a short term challenge. That is obvious because once the inventory levels normalize, of course, the sell in and sell through will get to a balanced situation again. The consumer demand remains as expected. So there is no major change there and fingerprint penetration rate is still increasing. The penetration rate is probably not going to be as high as 70% as we have thought earlier. It will be a few percentage points lower in terms of the fingerprint sensor penetration in mobile phones in 2017, but it is still a strong increase in it. Let's look at fingerprints value creation. What did other things what we did in 2016? We had over 10 billion touches per day on our sensors. Think about it, over 10 billion touches per day. About 1 million sensors delivered per day. Those are big numbers for a company. That is a testament for the growth and what we have done and the impact and the recognition of the impact of fingerprint sensing overall. We were chosen as the number one innovative Swedish company. We, we increased our talent in the company. We, lo we have over 20 sensor models with different packaging variants. So there is a lot more complexity, of course, coming into this industry as well, which requires R&D force and a lot more people and capabilities with the partners, stronger partners. We had a strong employee satisfaction and scoring that one is very important to me. It tells a lot about the company's spirit. And we launched 136 devices mobile phone devices with our, with our fingerprint sensor in them. And as I said earlier, our market share was between 55 and 60% last year. Now let me run through some of the key financials for 2016 for us. 
So our revenues were 6.6 .6 billion, uh, roughly Swedish krona, which is about 129% increase. Our gross margin was 48% and our operating profit was 2.6 billion Swedish krona. And that was 187% profit increase for us year on year. Our operating margin was 39% and which reflects, of course, uh, a very strong coming as a basic from a strong volume, good market share, and of course a good big ramp up that happens in the industry. And we are of course not projecting to continue with exactly these numbers because they are, as I said, when you get on, the, on a very good growth curve, that's what you typically can get in high tech industries. Good cash flow and the good net cash at the end of the year of, of a little bit above 1.1 billion Swedish krona. Now it's important also to take out those things which did not go well. One, we had a disclosure of our 2016 guidance, which was done on the Capital Markets Day in 2015, which came out too early. There was a human error, so the press release came out too early in the English version, which should not have happened, obviously. The second was a comment from the chairman of the board at the time, which should not have been said which basically just recognized the fact that it was a correct press release that went out. And then there was from one of the persons working in the company tweeting about a few things on the company and the guidances. These were the three separate things that happened. Now, none of them in itself would have led to a fine, but all combined, the disciplinary committee felt that they wanted to mark this and we got this fine. So what have we done about this one now? We have obviously recruited more people. We have a head of communication and marketing now. We have other people as well in the team. We have increased our processes and improved our processes. We do some of the key and most of the key PRs that we put out the press releases, we put out ourselves through our own process. So there are many things that have been improved in the company as well as the learnings from this one. And I am certain that we will do better going forward other things in our business, especially on the product areas. What do we deliver to the market? What is the value we bring to our customers? We launched in the mobile business 136 mobile devices with our sensor in 2016. That's all in all with 14 OEM customers. 10 launches of them were with new OEM customers. And we also launched with customers like Google, we have, of course, the Pixel smartphone. We have the big Chinese OEMs, uh, 12 mobile devices launched also in India with Chinese OEMs. And we had the biggest single sensor in volumes for us was the rear-mounted FPC 1035. And that was in 54 of the launches. So, as I said also, we have mentioned before Huawei, I said, Mate Pro 9. So we're very proud of the many, many of these from Oppos to Vivos that we launched. A lot of great brands and great names to be associated with in the mobile phone business for us. And we continue being competitive in that one. Now, if I look at the new segments in 2016, we of course launched the Samsung PC notebook. When I look at the PC specifically, we had presented also in CS in, in Las Vegas in Q1, our new PC offer with security, enhanced security features with much better performance. And we had our UltraThing smart card sensor, which we launched also into the market, which is a big step for us in terms of driving down cost, power efficiency, and a true mass production capable smart card uh, uh, sensor. Now we also sold other prototypes of our smart cards in Money 2020. And of course, we had the biometric module, which is the start of the IoT, which is the starting game of IoT, which is connected devices, which are wearables for payment, which are remote controls, which are of course different kind of locks in doors and other locking systems as well. That is some of the early and first advances that we have done in the IoT space. And we have established many partnerships which are so crucial as for us to build the ecosystem, to get through the manufacturing processes and get the cost levels right. The good thing, I have to say, with the ASP decline and the volume increase in the mobile business for fingerprint sensors, is that it actually starts to now drive also the new segments because they need to be cost competitive. We need to get the cost down of our new sensors to get 
all kind of IoT devices connected as well with biometry. Now let's close 2016 and with that I would like to show a short film on what smart cards and biometry will mean. Every day we buy things, small things, big things, tasty things, dear things. We do it in stores, our favorite cafe, or in that little corner of the world we just discovered. There are lots of ways to make a payment for the things you buy. Some would say too many. Some of these choices only make you insecure, when all you want to do is to trust people and worry less. Contactless payments are one of these new ways of paying. It was supposed to be faster, letting you make quick payments. And it was. It was supposed to be more convenient, without the need of remembering all those PIN codes. And it was. It was supposed to be safer, taking care of all your worries. And now it is. Fingerprint's proven biometric technology adds a new level of security and convenience to your bank cards. No more skimming, no more hassle with PIN codes, and no more uncertain payments. The reliability and security in our technology is already being used in millions of smartphones and tablets all over the world. Convenience is always the aim, but without security, you get worries. And as the ways of paying are increasing, getting faster, more convenient, and more common, we are making them safer, much safer. Do you want to go about your everyday life more conveniently and without worry? Ask your bank about biometric smart cards. It's smarter. It's safer. It's biometric. It's a world where you are the key to worryless payments. Now let me look at the long-term opportunity for us as a company and I'll start with the mega trends that are affecting us. It is important to understand some of these because they will influence what we need to do, our strategy and what kind of growth we can see in the market. Obviously biometrics and whatever happens in the world is fairly obvious that biometrics will only increase. All the different modalities, there will be more of them, it will increase into more space and there are many companies and there are many consumers and there are many countries that will clearly start to take biometrics more into use. The way the fluctuations, immigrations around the world, security issues around the world, all of this is impacting that there needs to be better authentication and identification of people. Now, obviously, there is always going to be a combination of security versus convenience. And I've always said that there is nothing that is 100% secure unless it is disconnected and buried somewhere very deep in terms of that information. So you always struggle with convenience versus security. We are working hard on that balance so that we bring extreme convenience ease of use and still a strong security and that's of course what biometrics brings which is far better than any pins and passwords that you have. Cloudification which has already started with uh, uh, of course in, in the whole high-tech industry brings volume artificial intelligence capabilities it brings new services to consumer and it brings you you know register once use everywhere kind of opportunities. It also brings big benefits in terms of governmental programs like the Adhar, which is being done in India where they register everybody and then you can identify yourself, you can get much better understanding of the money flow in the country, etc. Which is good in terms of clarity, transparency and so forth. And of course the explosion of the online payment and banking requires different authentication than just uh, pin codes and passwords we need to get into biometrics to increase the security because of course the level every year of hackers is increasing. The capabilities of hackers is increasing and we need to do this. It's like a 
fast ping pong game on the internet which is going on between the hackers increasing their capabilities and we in the industry increasing our capability to block all the time. The huge explosion of digitalization, internet of things, connected devices basically, it is extremely important for us and we want to work at the forefront of that industry to bring biometry into this one because obviously we want this to be the beautiful part of the strategy and the vision that everybody has to bring connected devices to consumers and companies. We don't want it to be the internet of threat, the one way and the doorway in for hackers. If we do not solve this, and I think biometry is the way to solve it, it is one way to increase the security in that space because at the moment it is full of holes. It is full of holes when it comes to the internet of things far too easy to hack yourself into it. Corporate responsibility, sustainability is of course very important for us as well and it is an increasing part and the awareness is increasing. I'm very pleased that we have also joined the United Nations Global Compact programs for example. It becomes more and more important when it comes to ethical behavior, making sure everything happens correctly in the chain, not using hazardous materials, and material from the wrong countries, etc. We are the number one fingerprint sensor company in the world. We want to be the number one biometrics company in the world. That means a change for us. We have been the number one fingerprint sensor company in the world and when we do this shift many things will change. Now the market is about when you get to the maximum of it in the smartphone market, 1.5 billion units we are looking at a tenfold increase in the terms of units. That will not happen if we do not innovate and bring new, more cost efficient, more flexible, less power consumption built sensors into the market and new modalities. We go from tens of customers to hundreds of customers. It increases our capability and complexity in many ways. We go from few major competitors to 10 to 15 major competitors across in different industries. So there will be hard competition. It is part of high-tech industry. It will be part of the biometric industry. No doubt about it. This is not for anybody to think that any you will be alone in this market ever. This is moving from one technology from fingerprint to several technologies of course iris and other modalities. We will have been focusing on a device and having the data and the information needed in the device and we will come now focus on cloud and device and the combination of those to drive efficiencies, to drive security and to drive better convenience. We go from model where you are hardware focused to a system focused, software as well as hardware. We need to combine them of course. We have one business line, we have now moved into having several business lines which will only increase for us. One thing remains the same, this industry is, and you have to love it, highly competitive, very fast, new technologies, new rumors, a lot of press releases from everybody. Innovate or die is still as true as ever. This industry only respects new deliveries and new innovation. And we still have strong customer focus, but we also need to expand and build ecosystems to get this new, the smart card and other places to grow. And we need to build that together with many partners, the automotive industry, medtech, etc. We are an entrepreneurial company. We need to keep that spirit. And we, of course, need to become more biometric capable and not only fingerprint sensors for us. Let me run through a little bit more on our strategy to drive continued profitable growth. So we have of course been in the existing business of the mobile phone industry and we are continuing when you look at the x-axis here, we are continuing to expand and bringing new things into the mobile phone industry. Acquisition of Iris is one example. We will look at new features, we have launched many new features, Force Touch, etc. There are many, many ways to bring other functionalities into this. And we are looking at expanding in the offerings still more. So we are in many parts of the process now working on that one. We have launched PC offerings. We're looking at working together with the automotive industry. We're looking at other industries as well. All of this of course takes it time to adapt and test and manufacture 
the biometric part of it. Let me go back to some of the big pictures of pure biometrics. So we have different biometric modalities. These are quite fascinating parts that are coming in. And you can see, of course, many of these. Uh, we have everything from facial to iris to fingerprint to voice and so forth here. Now, in, when you look at these, we have obviously been with the fingerprint, and I'll talk uh, shortly about that one as well, because there are different technology options there. But now with the acquisition of iris, iris is coming more forward, facial has been there, and voice is, of course, another very interesting biometric modality. And one thing I have to say about the acquisition of iris here is that it is the only of these modalities that actually stays the same through the lifetime of a person. Everything else kind of changes, uh, except of course some people have a facial uh, expression that stays for a longer time the same, and some move faster on it. But there are big changes in people's during your lifetime, from childhood to adulthood. That's a good thing about iris, which stays the same throughout your life. Now, fingerprint is also for us has been, of course, a very strong technology, and we will continue expanding because there are so many places where it works so well because you, of course, with all of this, you become the password, you become the pin. You are the key to opening up everything. Now, different technologies, you know, the capacity, we will continue building on the capacity. There are many generations to come of capacity still. And we need to look at specifically for under glass, we need to be also driving the development when it comes to ultrasonic and optical. And we are working, of course, on both of these and how to bring other solutions, especially when we're talking about in-display solutions, thicker glass solutions, where we also need to be one of the leaders in the industry. That is a very key for us also in terms of our new innovation, new R&D investments. When I talk about many modalities, once again, we have gone into acquiring Delta ID, the iris, one of the leading iris players in the world, specifically in the mobile space. Now, they are also part of the India Idaho program, certified there. So this was a very key and perfect match for us to go together, both in terms of bringing value to mobile phone inders, but also expanding into other businesses. They already had a small cloud solution in terms of building the on that one as well for us. It is a start for us in, in building other capabilities. We will also look at better security when we combine them and we face them. There is no one perfect thing for security, but when you put them like an onion, you have many layers, the more security you get, the harder it is to break. That's the simpleness of security. Know what you want to protect and protect it by layers of different security. And that's, of course, how we are thinking as well. Also, bringing convenience. It is a very convenient way to use also in terms of the iris. We only update our long-term financial objectives once a year, and we will get back to them, of course, next year, the next time we update. Now, obviously, with our short-term challenges in 2017, with the first half, they will impact our 2017 numbers. We are not giving guidance anymore. Uh, for this year on a yearly basis. And uh, that means, of course, that we will get back to this when we get into next year. Now, however, as I have explained and as we look at this industry, there are multiple opportunities in this industry for us to grow and, and look at the market growth. It obviously needs to come outside of the mobility as well, of the mobile phones. That in alone will not give us these kind of numbers when we look at the growth trajectory for us. So I look forward to many of these good expansions in the other markets. Now, a few words on sustainability. This is also something that I'm pleased that we have got going as a company during last year. So we have issued several policies. We have a code of business conduct done for all our employees, as well as for many partners, for most of our suppliers. So we are in facing and going ahead here. It is something that we are learning as a company. We have come from a small company to a fairly big and we have a lot to do. But I am also pleased that we have a sustainability forum and myself am in it as well. Many of our key managers are in that and that brings attention to this one as well. And we created a sustainability framework for us, which aligns us for our future goals when it comes to it, which has to do with equal opportunity, which has to do with getting more 
uh, gender e equality as well. We have increased on our, our positions of women in the company. We have a target setting for up till 2020 for many of these metrics. And we have also joined the United Nations Global Compact. Uh, I'm very pleased of that. We have gotten ISO 14001 certified and we are now reporting our carbon disclosure project uh, methods and, and results as well. So there are many things that has happened. I realize there is still a lot for us to do in this space as well. There are two things in business that you must always take care of. You must take care of your customers. Customer satisfaction as a metric is one of the most, if not the most important for us as a company. And the other one is employee engagement, net promoter score. How willing are you to promote your company? How willing are you to tell about other people about your company? So talented people count. Engaged people count. They make the difference in business. The way they respond to customers. And I've seen that over and over again in this company. I am impressed. I am grateful. I'm humbled by the spirit, the power, the engagement of our people. They are truly wonderful, talented personnel that I have the pleasure to work with. And I look forward to many of the great things that we will do together as we go on this journey. And yes, there will be humps on the ways. There will be many of them in this competitive industry. But when you have talented people, you solve all of them on the road. Thank you to our great personnel. Now, in a summary, we are competitive, and yes, we will fight for our market share. It is a hard, great, wonderful, sometimes fluctuating business. We have the best system capabilities in this industry, and we want to maintain that. And yes, I have explained about the short-term challenges that we have in the first half of 2017. It is a lot of learnings for us when it comes to the excess inventory that was built up, when it comes to understanding what is sell in and what is sell through. And now we need to no watch and work on normalizing those inventory levels during this first half. But we remain competitive and we will continue winning the deals that we need to win here on the journey to stay the leader and stay ahead in the volumes. I'm proud of the broadening product portfolio and the expansion in innovation that we are doing. And I feel strong about the long-term opportunities we have as a company. This is a wonderful industry. It is highly competitive, it is challenging, and it is not a straight road at always at every time. But it is still one of the greatest places to be in this whole industry, as I feel. We know and I know that growth will come from the new segments and new technologies and we need to continue to innovate. And we see some of the first tractions of the new segments that we are building. We will also increase our ambition when it comes to sustainability. It's important that we are a good corporate citizen, which helps us also to attract key talent. I know we are on the start of that journey as well, and there is a lot that we can do. Overall, biometry in itself will bring a lot of value when it comes to sustainability, driving transparency, improving ethical and against corruption, and better security and convenience for people and consumers. Now, we want to become the number one biometrics company in the world. And I truly, truly believe this is only the start of the biometric era. There will be many wonderful, hard, challenging situations. But I look forward to all of those when we are on our journey now. Thank you very much.